Okay, so let me now end off on the Bitcoin thing, because I alluded to the fact that I don't think Bitcoin in the way it is today is going to last forever. Now, as a Bitcoin, what's called maximalist, you know, I always used to say things like, one day, you know, if somebody would say, listen, okay, Bitcoin is cool, but what about other currencies? What if the currency comes along that's better than Bitcoin? Okay, and I, always, I would always say things like, no, it's never going to happen, you know, because if something comes along that's better than Bitcoin, you know, it's software, Bitcoin will just upgrade. The community will never allow Bitcoin to become a lesser coin or a lesser cryptocurrency that, that you know, people move away from. That was kind of my belief. That's what I used to say to people. But over the last few years, what we've noticed is that the, the maintainers of Bitcoin, because there is a community maintaining Bitcoin, they have been, become fixated on this one path of being able to scale Bitcoin. Because right now, Bitcoin has a huge problem. As more and more people get into it, the volumes pick up, and Bitcoin has this, this cap on how many transactions per second. And uh, what happens now is the fees are becoming enormous with Bitcoin. If you want to send money with Bitcoin today, sometimes you're going to pay 50 Rand, 100 Rand, just to move a little bit of Bitcoin. So to me, Bitcoin is starting to show uh, uh, the kind of thing that I never thought would happen, where it's becoming so resistant to change that it's actually going to potentially fail. Now, in, on August the 1st, what happened was the, the uh, uh, a community decided to split Bitcoin or fork it away. It's called fork it away and go back to the way Bitcoin was created initially, where what we have is we don't have this artificial supply and how many transactions per second. And that, by the way, is related directly to the block size. Remember, I said transactions come every 10 minutes and are grouped into a block. Well, that block has a limit of how many transactions. Well, what happened on August the 1st is that this was created Bitcoin Cash. And Bitcoin Cash said, whoa, 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 we don't like what Bitcoin is doing right now. We don't like the fact that they're trying to create new technology to scale Bitcoin, which is unproven and potentially might fail. What we're going to do is we're just going to keep Bitcoin the way it is, the way it was originally devised, and we're just going to increase the size of the blocks. Now, you'll be amazed that that is such an issue, but it has created the split in the community. And right now, Bitcoin Cash, in my mind, is probably going to become the dominant Bitcoin in the future. So this is not investment advice or anything like that, but uh, it happened. It happened where Bitcoin, it did in fact become something that didn't keep up with innovation. And I do believe that Bitcoin Cash is going to be uh, the coin that is going to have the most uh, value in, in the future because especially of its low fees and its speed of transactions. The fact that I can now make a one Rand payment with Bitcoin Cash. Making a one Rand payment with Bitcoin is going to cost me 50 or 100 Rand to do, which is insane. And that's not, probably not going to change uh, for a long time. So I wanted to bring this up because it's something I feel strongly about. And as people like yourselves, you might even be thinking about investing in Bitcoin. Sure, the price of Bitcoin is 10,000, 11,000. It's probably going to 15, 20, who knows. But as far as the long-term potential for these two currencies, if you have to make the decision, technically and fundamentally and economically, I do believe that Bitcoin Cash is going to become you know, a, a, a superior coin. And I wanted to just put that in there because it has become political and, and quite complicated. Um, and I hope that that can answer some questions for you.